Good evening, everyone. Welcome to everyone on behalf of Dohini Telecom Philanthropy. May I request the speakers to mute themselves? We have an echo. Thank you. Freedom's Award has evoked the strong emotions and passions and citizenry to take action on several societal issues. The purpose of this session is to understand the thought process behind making the film, the impact they have, and the possibility of molding a broader conversation to them. A few housekeeping rules for the audience. We have a QA space to put in your questions, and there's a chat space for conversation. Uh, you can ask questions throughout the session, and you can also upvote certain questions. And we'll take questions in the last 10 minutes of the session. Um, quickly introducing Hansel Mehta, who needs no introduction. He's an Indian film director, writer, actor, producer, who works in Hindi cinema. He started his career in television with the show Khara Fazala and later moved on to films like Jayate, Dil Se Matleyaj, and Chal. He's best known for Shahid, for which he won the National Film Award for Best Director. He then went on to direct City Light, Aligarh, Simran, Scan 92, and many more. We welcome you, Samantha. Our next speaker here is Anushka Shah. Anushka founded a civic entertainment project at MIT Media Lab and now runs a production house, Civic Studios, in Mumbai. Civic Studios creates entertainment in the form of film, web series, and short form digital content to inspire citizen partnership and help build better democracy. We welcome both of you and over to you, Anushka. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, and hi, Hansel. So this is Hansel and my third panel together, I think, on this topic. So either we're very good at this or the industry needs more souls interested in uh, <laughs> democracy. But thanks, Hansel, for joining the chat. Uh, and as always, looking forward to talking to you. Um, the topic for today is light citizenship action, which begs the question of what does what we watch on Netflix tonight have to do with democracy? Um, I think when we talk about the uh, talk about media as a fourth pillar of democracy, we I think put more of that onus on the news media and we let entertainment go a little bit scot free. And yet, entertainment today is a form of media we are statistically spending more time on than any other form. Entertainment can amuse, but I think with those same emotions, characters, drama, it also has the power to influence. And I think particularly when it comes to active citizenship, it can, of course, bring awareness to an issue. I think that much you know, is well established. But it can also reflect experiences of minority groups. It can tell you the story of a social movement on a big screen. Um, it can illustrate types of civic action through you know, characters that you look up to and, and much more. Um, I think the Nudge team has a poll that's linked to this. It's a short one. Uh, I think the question says, where do we see films having the most impact in the context of active citizenship? So I'll just let them post that poll. The options are creating awareness, shifting the narrative, or driving action. I'm going to give it this a few seconds till everyone's reacted to it. For uh, folks interested in this topic, Hansen and I have done a series with Film Companion separately on films and social impact. It's, it's really interesting and it explores the different ways that films can have an impact. So you can also check that out on Film Companion's YouTube link. Cool. While I think we're just finishing this, um, Right after this, we'll begin with uh, playing a short clip from Rangde Basanti. And I think the reason we're going to start with that to set the tone a little bit is because whenever we have a conversation about uh, films and democracy, that comes up as the one iconic uh, example. It inspired you as a film to be a part of the system. 
but it also had a real world impact outside of the film in encouraging people to reopen the it ended up encouraging the reopening of the Jessica Lal murder case so could i just request the nudge team to play that clip and then we'll dive right into our conversation after that thank you I always believed there were two kinds of men in this world. Men who go to their deaths screaming, and men who go to their deaths in silence. And then I met the third kind. This is my grandfather's diary. He was an eyewitness. How can this be a will? Tell me! How can this be the will of God? Mulkat mo, zameen ab mo, par hume bhaga rahe hain videshi. Boys, no older than 23, fighting the Empire, okay? You guys are perfect. <laughs> कोई भी देश परफेक्ट नहीं होता उसे बेहतर बनाना पड़ता है वो पैन दे टके वो पास दी गल कर रही है और तू फ्यूचर दे पीछे पड़ा है एक पैर पास में ते एक पैर फ्यूचर में तभी तो हम आज पे मूत रहे स्कॉट को हम नहीं छोड़ सकते मार डालो उसे ओए हाथ पर हाथ धरे बैठे रहे ये क्या हो रहा है कुछ नहीं बदलेगा मार डालो उसे कौन करेगा खत्म हाँ कौन अरे खत्म कौन करेगा मैं जिंदगी जीने के दो ही तरीके होते हैं एक जो हो रहा होने दो बर्दाश्त करते जाओ या फिर जिम्मेदारी उठाओ उसे बदलने की Thank you for that. Hansel, so I think the first question when I see this trailer is for me is that, you know, what do you think in, has changed in India since 2006 when Rangde Basandi released? Do you think that the movie would still have the same impact on young people and citizens today? Well, uh, you know, uh, I've tested this hypothesis just a, a few weeks ago. So I, uh, you know, my daughter, I, I was, we were watching Tufan. And uh, with, I was watching Tufan with my daughters. And uh, you know, while she liked the film, she had a lot of questions. So I said, you know, this, this is the filmmaker who made Rangde Basanti. So mm. my daughter was, I think, born uh, in the year of Rangde Basanti. So I showed her the, uh, you know, so uh, right after Tufan, I showed her Rangde Basanti. Mm. 
Hmm. And uh, I was waiting to see what kind of impact it had on her. And uh, she was moved by the film. Hmm. Uh, she was very, very moved. She was quite stirred up. I mean, she spoke. We we talked about the film uh, till until very late. We spoke about it the next day. I think we've just lost Hansa's network. Maybe we'll give it a minute. In the meanwhile, in case anybody in the audience has questions that you'd like to leave in the chat, please feel free to. We'll make sure we'll take them up at the end. Maybe just a quick note to the nudge team in case we don't get Hansel's connection back. Oh, there, I think we've got it. I think we have you back. Oh, really sorry. Uh, no problem. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I wish somebody made a Rangdi Basanti on our mobile networks. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the impact of the film was very strong. It really stirred uh, up a conversation. And uh, it also left me wondering whether we could even get to make a film like this today mm. you know uh, and whether uh, rakesh mehra who made that film i mean there was an anger that the film reflected whether he would make such a film today yeah you know you know it makes you wonder whether people and their political stance has also changed over the years and whether uh, they actually feel empowered enough to make a film like rangdi basanti yeah. to reflect uh, the times so uh, you know, I saw it with a sense of uh, you know, I I loved the film, and but I saw it also with a sense of uh, uh, you know uh, despair. Because I'm not sure if we can make uh, a Rangdi Basanti today, uh, at least not reflecting the times that we're living in. We can make a Rangdi Basanti uh, and you know bash the Congress government, uh, but I don't think uh, we can uh, be open enough. I mean, it's a, it's a comment. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a state of democracy that uh, we are encouraged. Yeah, it's a. I think it's a very ironic moment. I remember talking to Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra about this, and uh, you know, I, I asked him kind of what had motivated him to make the film, and he said it was the zeitgeist of that time and that moment, which I think any film that touches uh, an audience often does. Um, what kind of media narratives do you think we need today to encourage more democracy? And this is taking off from your point that somewhere we've, you know, when you're sliding from a liberal to a semi-liberal democracy, how can media narratives help push that trend back? Well, I think uh, it uh, ultimately emerges from the storyteller uh, and uh, you know, the person who sort of shapes the narrative is the storyteller. Uh, and uh, I just feel storytellers need to sort of uh, rejuvenate and reinvigorate that uh, that spirit of fearless uh, storytelling. I think that is uh, crucial uh, in today's uh, times, at any time. You know, uh, we need more and more fearless uh, storytellers. And we need to find a way to tell uh, our stories no matter how critical they are of uh, the current establishment or how unpopular uh, your opinion uh, in the film is uh, with uh, the powers that be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to find a way to tell those stories because they're crucial. Uh, we are living in a time where uh, you know conversations are one-sided. We are sort of forced to have those one-sided conversations. Uh, uh, we uh, are uh, often forced to tell uh, tales that uh, fit into in the un, in the garb of nationalism and patriotism. I mean, they are uh, uh, you know forced to belong to a, a very specific narrative. Uh, you know, a narrative that is convenient to uh, a particular set of people, to a 
to the present dispensation so i think we need to i mean uh, we need to be able to tell uh, have a counter narrative and we need to do it elegantly we need to do it uh, responsibly i'm not saying that you know we should be uh, loud or uh, uh, you know crass about it yeah i'm i'm going to push a little bit more on this in that i think um you know and i fully agree as i think many in the audience would that there is a need to do that how you know how do you practically as a filmmaker and as a content creator go about that when there is such a fear of a backlash right and an industry that is already i think extremely intense in its you know the the work the timings the uh, margins it is it is a difficult business so how do you balance that risk that you need to take um versus the backlash that you could get from that yeah i think uh, you know again the secret of that uh, lies in you know watching rangde basanti that you uh, you tell your story within uh, you know in an accessible manner uh, you tell that story uh, in an entertaining manner create compelling characters i mean just follow the basics of good storytelling you know create compelling characters tell uh, you know unique stories and uh, uh, you know make them uh, make uh, make the film well make your make your show well i, I think that is uh, most most important uh, 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 that you know if if there's a compelling story there are compelling characters you will find people willing to uh, be a part of it hmm. there will be many people who might uh, you know not want to be a part of it because it might reflect a slightly bolder uh, viewpoint than the one considered popular but you will find enough people to uh, become a part of your vision and uh, i mean you should be also ready to sacrifice uh, mm. you know i'm giving you my own example after the success of my show scam 1992 flooded with a different with all kinds of uh, films and offers i've taken up some of them but before i embarked on uh, you know doing those films i'm ma- i'm making a small film called faraz uh, Yeah. Faraz is, uh, in that sense, a very independent narrative. It is trying to stir up a conversation, uh, and uh, you know, it is looking at an event, and through that event, it is trying to discuss and look and stir up a conversation about uh, the youth, about uh, you know uh, where our youth uh, is heading, what they are thinking, uh, you know, uh, the the youth that belongs to uh, a religious minority. Uh, you know the muslim mm. young the the youth what they thinking so uh, i've uh, i've used that success to be able to tell the story and i think we have to use uh, our success a bit responsibly we well, yes make money but also mm. make uh, so in terms of strategy i think i will make a film like this at least once or twice a year mm. uh, you know uh, it will uh, to uh, you you sacrifice some money but you uh, get uh, you you tell the stories that count mm. yeah i think that's a very specific helpful i think insider strategy to to think of how do you cross subsidize your own work so as to do that um that i guess i think particularly when you're living in a semi liberal time you have to kind of adopt methods like that to be able to still keep the perseverance of that fight on and as smartly as as one can Are there examples? Yeah, I mean, look at uh, look at Anubhav Sinha's. Yeah, uh, like you know, look at Anubhav Sinha's work. Hmm. You know, whether it is Mulk or it is Article Fifteen or Thappar. I mean, hmm. just an attempt to build uh, a conversation within uh, the mainstream. You know, so the films have done well uh, commercially. So yeah. there is a storytelling that has obviously appealed. Uh, to uh, a larger audience you know i have often have disagreements with him about how how verbos or how much they spell out uh, their themes uh, but uh, i also at the same time accept that uh, that spelling out has led to a larger uh, a more mass conversation right. it has led to more access uh, for his work uh, so uh, yeah i mean it uh, there is a lesson somewhere in that Mm. and uh, that we can exist within our current uh, system which we see as very stifling within that system and make films that uh, 
stir up uh, conversations. Hmm. It's interesting you say that because I think Anubhav Sinan, one of the interviews, had said that he has a close filmmaker friend who was critical of that last scene of Thappar uh, in the puja when it was spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> now I know who that is. Um, but it's, I think it's, <laughs> that is, that's an interesting point in, in balancing kind of the art of filmmaking versus when you when you are making films with the aim of impact as well. You know, I think that's a line that you then choose to cross when you have almost that double objective. Um, are there films that you think that have concretely moved the needle in India when it comes to democracy? Ah, oh. well, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, you know the last uh, uh, seven years have been very difficult. You know, so you can barely actually count those uh, films uh, yeah. on your fingertips. And I, I don't think. See. Uh, I am of the firm opinion that films, uh, uh, you know, you can push the limits of the democracy that you enjoy at that moment. I mean, democracy for me is very relative. It is the amount of uh, freedom you have within the given, uh, uh, you know, at at that moment within the given circumstances uh, imposed upon the system by the system. Hmm. So, uh, I I think uh, you know there have been. Uh, I mean, I can give you an example of uh, you know my film Aligarh. Hmm. Uh, that hap- we made that film in 2015, released it in 2016, and uh, while it was not a runaway commercial uh, uh, success or a mainstream film, what it did is it successfully cre- uh, you know became a centerpiece of the conversation around LGBTQ uh, rights, the right to privacy. Yeah. I mean, you start talking about the right to privacy. Uh, then, I mean, that was the time when three seven seven was uh, in force uh, yeah. again. You know, and so uh, somewhere uh, that uh, conversation about three seven seven and its complete irrelevance in our modern society uh, was, uh, you know, it sparked a debate. We yeah. we were at the center of that debate for a long, long time. Uh, you, know, you know, it stirred up uh, emotions. Mm. So, uh, I mean, there have been, you know, whether, uh, I mean, Neeraj Gevan's work in Masan, uh, in a very silent and very mm. uh, beautiful way, uh, you know, opened up conversations about class. Uh, I feel, uh, you know, Mulk uh, was an important film uh, in the past few years. Absolutely. You know, again, which is talking about uh, the identity um, politics. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, otherwise it's very difficult to name such films. I mean, Hazaro Khwaish Aisi by Sudhir Mishra, that was a film that I thought uh, really uh, very elegantly. It, it's, it's an example of how good storytelling and political, uh, you know, viewpoints are both uh, can be such potent cinematic uh, tools. It's perhaps the best political drama made in our country. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Shahid, you know, for me, Shahid, my, my film Shahid, I think was an important uh, document on uh, on the Muslim uh, middle class. Hmm. You know, uh, hmm. It sort of, uh, sh- it, it did shine a light on uh, their lives, on their world, also on this, and the, the, the condition and the helplessness of, uh, you know, uh, minorities and economically, uh, yeah. you know, underserved, uh, under trials. Yeah. Their, their, their lack of uh, access to defense and, uh, you know, how hopeless a judicial system is for people who don't have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the access to good quality defense. Yeah. No, and I think all the films that you've named are, you know, I think uh, iconic in so many ways. I mean, I, you know, the, in the south, I mean, I I would I remember, I mean, Bisar Nai by Vetri Maran, uh, I think was an important uh, yeah. uh, film. So some of Vetri's work and some of the films that you see in the Malayalam uh, space, uh, recent films that you see <laughs> in Malayalam uh, are, I mean, I thought The Great Indian Kitchen in many ways, you know, it's a very, yeah. uh, powerful film uh, on, you know, sort of uh, demolishing uh, prevalent patriarchal, uh, you know, behavioral, mm. patriarchal behavior 
uh, within the family uh, you know unit so i thought that was a very 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 powerful film it had an impact on uh, me and i mean i've uh, i've been actively trying to get the film made in different languages the great indian kitchen so the, yes i think it should be seen uh, you know it should be seen in many languages it needs to reach uh, uh, people around the country and for that it needs to be made in a language other than hindi uh, i think it needs to be made in uh, many local languages yeah no absolutely i mean i think as a as an audience member i have been so impacted by these films but now that we've kind of as a company when we went into production the one thing we've also realized is that there are so many young filmmakers who will say okay a uh, hansel mehta did this and anubhav sinha did that they inspired by the we are inspired by the fact that there was success with these films and they managed to talk for important topics so i think there is also a ripple effect within the industry when one person manages to do a film like that that more of those crop up and i want to use your mention of um, shahid and ali ghar as a segue so i think we were keen on playing the trailers for that so that the audience also gets a chance to connect with them um, and then we'll continue the conversation with that sure दिखाकर खुदा ने इंसाफ सिखाया दर्द बेजती जुर्म का सामना करके मुझे लड़ना सिखाया उन लोगों की मदद करना सिखाया जो खुद की मदद करने के काबिल नहीं है इसको याद रखना जिंदगी भर टेररिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंटरनेट के बेसिस पर इतने बड़े बड़े हादसे करते हैं या नहीं कि लेकिन लगता है शाहिद साहब को इसकी बड़ी अच्छी जानकारी है नो व्हाट आर यू ट्राइंग टू से आपने काफी समय बिताया है टेररिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस के साथ है ना आई आर यू एक्यूजिंग मी I'm not sure if we're also playing the trailer for Aligarh. मेरे खिलाफ साजिश थी। आप गए हैं इसलिए? कोई मेरी फीलिंग को तीन अक्षरों में कैसे समझ सकता है? ये एक कविता की तरह से है। भावात्मक एन अनकंट्रोलेबल ओज एम आई ड्रंक नॉट येट देन आई लाइव वन मोर देखो मैं यहां बाहर का आदमी समझा जाता हूं एन आउटसाइडर उर्दू बोलने वाले शहर में मराठी सिखाता हूं शादीशुदा लोगों के बीच अकेला रहता हूं
आई आर ब्रेकिंग स्टोरी है अलीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी में कुछ टीवी जर्नलिस्ट से एक प्रोफेसर का घर में जबरदस्ती घुस गया एंड दे फिल्म में हैविंग सेक्स विद द रिक्शा पुलर प्रोफेसर सिराज के बारे में 2 मिनट्स बात करना था एक स्टोरी करना आई डोंट वांट टू टॉक टू द मीडिया होमोसेक्सुअलिटी को प्रैक्टिस करना वो भी यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोमाइसेस के अंदर हराम माना जाता है आपको कमरा खाली कर रहा है बैचलर आदमी नहीं चाहिए तो बैचलर आदमी क्या टेररिस्ट होता है अरे होता होगा तुम लोग ये शब्द के पीछे क्यों पड़ जाते हो कभी लव को भी समझने की कोशिश किया करो इस ब्यूटीफुल वर्ल्ड क्या प्रोफेसर सिरस अपना बिजनेस बाहर खेल के मैदान में कंडक्ट कर रहे थे व्हाट बिजनेस टू नेबर्स हैव लुकिंग इनटू टू समन्स बेडरूम You have to fight it out, Mr. Siras. क्या करना होगा मुझे? कौन है? You mentioned earlier, Hansel, that you know we need to kind of encourage more filmmakers to tell these kinds of stories, and it's it's hard to separate the art from the artist or the personal from the political. What is it that motivated you to want to tell these two stories specifically with Shahid and Abigail? Ah, uh, I think the human uh, the human stories. Uh, you know, the I uh, for me always the personal comes before the public. so i mean while uh, they are powerful uh, you know i uh, when i found my voice as a filmmaker I, mean, i realized that the stories i wanted to tell was of those who were at the margins of society uh, uh, but personal stories mm. uh, i wanted to find the stories from uh, within uh, our uh, surroundings you know they need not be uh, jingoistic heroes they need not be larger than life people uh, so in the quest to find those stories i think we found uh, through them issues that affect you on a personal level uh, like professor siras was not an activist mm. he was not Maybe in the meanwhile, while we get Hansel back, I don't know if the Nudge team wants to share the poll results. Yeah, we can do that. We can also take some questions. Sure. Ah, uh, in the meantime, so the only thing is without Hansel, we won't be able to answer. Yeah, I think they're with Hansel, so maybe we can uh, uh, just publish the poll. Sure. Sorry, Hi. we have you back. <laughs> Terrible network. Uh, no problem. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I think it was just the personal stories that uh, were that had uh, a great impact on me. I mean, I want mm-hmm. they impact me emotionally. Shai mm-hmm. Dasmi story really resonated with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, you know, justice, uh, social justice, uh, inequality. I mean, these are the themes that have always bothered me. Uh, mm. and uh, they keep me uh, they make me restless they make me uh, they make me lose my sleep uh, and uh, you know to find such personal stories uh, about things that make you angry that make you uh, question uh, the world that you live in 
you know that's the reason these films uh, have that power yeah. that, you know years after they were made uh, they still have the potential to uh, inspire to uh, create to provoke conversations so uh, yeah i mean it was i think it, uh, ultimately it was the stories they were really really powerful uh, uh, stories that uh, you know uh, made me tell them you know i think just i think when you lost your network for a second they were um, showing the results of the poll it showed that i think roughly yeah i think 46 and 42% of people have said creating awareness and shifting the narrative in terms of how films can have an impact and there's a much kind of smaller share about 12% that's talk on driving action and i i think this is an um, it's an interesting result and it's an important question i think to explore because you know at civic studios a lot of what we are trying to answer is how do you create entertainment that is not just going to provoke action in terms of insurrectionism right or revolution but when it comes to democracy building you need institutionalism you need to think about reform it's the slow boring incremental things often that you have to fight for and we are struggling to understand that while you can spark conversations and while we can create more awareness as a society how do we and which is the first step but how do we translate that to the second action a second step of the actual action you know if you're talking about section 377 how do you make sure more people are supporting that or how do you make sure there are more campaigns protests social media activism all the different forms of it to legalize gay marriage for example so any thoughts on where that shift from awareness to action i think uh, you know uh, it is uh, uh, that's why uh, you know civil, uh, civil society comes into play I mean, you know as storytellers you can take these you can spark up these conversations you can create uh, these uh, narratives but uh, you know i always say after the film is made and it is out there in the public domain it's over to Uh, civil society uh, to okay. actually you know the institutions within civil society uh, need to work more closely with uh, storytellers mm. you know and we as storytellers need to involve them as producers as uh, studios we somewhere need to find a way of engaging with uh, you know institutions that uh, uh, you know can uh, you know drive action because as as a uh, cinema as a, uh, you know its function is limited to that uh, in my opinion to limited to that of uh, provoking thought or you know creating uh, provoking debate but beyond that uh, you know unless civil society does not uh, is not made to take action by organized uh, you know uh, uh, movements uh, nothing is going to happen You know, did Rangdev Basanti make a change? Uh, yes, the Jassi Kalal case was opened up. I think that mm. uh, it was an example of uh, one example of a film actually driving some sort of change. Mm. But it's, it's very rare. It's very very rare. I also feel that you know we need to be able to uh, you know entertainment. We have to look at entertainment and uh, storytelling. We need to look beyond. the conventional forms of entertainment you know i recently got uh, engaged with a uh, tiktok kind of medium uh, you know a short really short form uh, so i think what is important is that beyond uh, films ott uh, series uh, we uh, need to uh, work a lot i mean there, there's a huge potential in that uh, sh- really mini uh, the micro Uh, mm-hmm. format you know the one minute two minute format yeah. there's a lot we can do uh, by telling powerful stories compelling stories there and uh, you know be driving far more uh, uh, having far more conversations through that because i see that you know a lot of young conversations are driven uh, yeah. from those mediums i think that's it's a great way to engage uh, with uh, the youth and to sort of provoke uh, them to act i think you've uh, answered a question that somebody had in the audience about the role of kind of short form media like tiktok reels and memes um i'm going to uh, 
grab time for one last question, Mayan, and then open up the questions we have from the audience. I think especially when you highlight the role of civil society, and since we are kind of, you know, in a forum and a session where it does have a lot to do with the social sector and philanthropy. Uh, and I often hear a lot of people in this space uh, talking about how do we kind of, you know, use or support media to create social change, right? Um, so do you have any thoughts on what role uh, funders and philanthropists can play in supporting this and bridging that gap between change makers and media creators? Yeah, I mean, it's very simple. I've always thought, uh, felt that India needs its own participant media. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we need a studio uh, that uh, makes uh, films uh, with uh, a strong voice that yeah. backs them. You know, so uh, it need not be philanthropy. Uh, it is it, uh, but films as a social business uh, should yeah. be uh, encouraged and invested in. I just I feel that uh, you know our studios uh, are too we uh, are run uh, the you know our, our storytelling is run by studios that are only uh, that are full of greed. Uh, the, I mean greed drives everything, and it's not bad to be greedy because you know ultimately you're there for the profits but uh, i think uh, you know we can uh, and they, that and that kind of which it doesn't the answer is not in getting a participant media to india the answer yeah. is in creating our own uh, model yeah. for telling those stories for being slightly mm, uh, fearless you know those yeah. fearless stories and uh, it uh, it needs some amount of uh, uh, fearless investing i think uh, and that is what, uh, and uh, a lot more, uh, you know, again, uh, to answer the previous question also, that a uh, lot more investment in, uh, you know, these new font in new media. Uh, we need to be really, uh, uh, you know, uh, engaging with society through new media. Yeah. You know, our, our, this whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-profits, uh, there's too much of this newslettering and very old-fashioned uh, means of uh, communication. I think it is important that uh, you know uh, uh, the the social sector engages uh, with uh, the wider audience in a more meaningful and a more uh, relevant manner. Yeah, absolutely. Shameless plug for Civic Studios, but our internal pitch deck says we are trying to be the Indian participant media. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, so, yeah. But but great, thank you so much for answering that and for patiently answering my questions. Um, I'll I'll open up to the questions that we have from the audience. I think Sudeep has a question. Um, while films can be good triggers for general audience, understanding of pertinent issues requires more deep reading and research. How can we make sure we don't lose sight of where the audience forms opinions without knowing much? The narrative versus the knowledge. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's see, again. This is uh, it's a car. It's a cart and horse situation. Uh, you know, I what uh, like again the example I can give is from my own work. Uh, Scam nineteen ninety two uh, when it came out, very many very few people knew. Uh, a lot of people. I mean, the amount of people who watched it, uh, I'm sure more than sixty to seventy percent knew nothing about mm. uh, or more knew nothing about the money market. Uh, well, you know, a smaller percentage knew something about uh, shares and investing uh, and speculation in the capital markets. Uh, a lot of people after watching the show, I mean, it's not that the film, uh, that the show uh, really cleared concepts, but people actually went and did their own reading right. Right, to understand uh, the markets. And I think, uh, again, that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, films are a beginning, a starting point for that quest for knowledge that if the film uh, really uh, you know stirs you emotionally uh, if it does something within you uh, your quest it it should uh, you know possibly uh, stir up uh, that that need for the greater knowledge so i think a, a narrative uh, and knowledge don't work at uh, are not counterproductive i think they are uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that they are um, uh, allies uh, in uh, creating uh, social change. That you know, uh, 
first comes the narrative then comes the quest for knowledge and then uh, hopefully some level of uh, you know some drive towards change yeah no, absolutely i think that's that's fair. i was definitely one of those people with scam who did not know much about the money market but it, it builds so much intrigue that the next time when you're reading an article or, you know come across something in the news you're so much likely to pay attention to it and learn more so absolutely um interesting point that hansel meta makes about the current context and if rdb can be remade can be made uh, do you see any of the newer forms of entertainment bridging the gap like tiktok reels memes etc i think you've partly answered this yeah. ad anything i think i've answered that but i i do feel i feel this new that new media for years has been uh, very uh, very potent has been a very potent force and uh, we need to have a more structured approach to content for uh, new media uh, you know while a lot of entertaining stuff is made and all that i think within that entertainment we can uh, uh, tell powerful stories i mean look at some of the really sharp political commentary some of the really angry uh, uh, you know uh, angry humor uh, has all emerged from uh, you know instagram yeah and so the uh, influencers belong there some of the most uncomfortable questions have been raised on uh, social media so i think we uh, we need to give these forms of entertainment far more importance than they given uh, currently yes uh, and uh, we you know the fact that they make uh, a difference uh, uh, you know the the guidelines that were released recently uh, tells you how powerful they are you know yeah. for a government to release guidelines that restrict uh, that potentially restrict uh, uh, the 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 kind of content that one can actually get to see there mm, you know that the, the attempt to restrict uh, those mediums and is uh, uh, by itself uh, tells you the state of democracy today yeah yeah and i i mean i think sometimes of because there is frivolous silly content also on it i think it's underestimated but my professor at mit had this paper that he wrote called the cute cat theory and it was exactly the fact that because you go to social media for cute cats you end up seeing you know you can you can end up uh, kind of complementing that with more serious things as well um, yeah what are your thoughts on the representation of persons with disability in indian cinema and bollywood specifically do you think cinema is powerful enough to bring in topics like disability into the mainstream this is by kanithi i i wish we did more about that uh, you know disability unfortunately uh, most of the time it's disability minorities uh, i by uh, minorities marginalized uh people the, unfortunately they have been uh, stereotyped uh, and yeah. often caricatured uh, you know in the past uh, we there is an attempt to now stop carry that that uh, to have lesser caricaturization of uh, some sections of society but uh, disability we don't pay much attention to and i remember a studio and i went with a story uh, a very personal story about down syndrome uh, to a studio head and uh, his response was yeah, who, you know which hero will play a person like this and you know who will watch this you know you can't watch two hours of somebody who's uh, looking ugly so i mean this is the way uh, it is looked at uh, you know uh, they believe that it does not it will not resonate to the popular so uh, until that happens i mean we uh we've had very few examples of disability being represented with uh, like there was Mar margarita with a straw yeah. but again it's it's very non uh, uh, mainstream you know otherwise you have films like i mean no disrespect but a film like black which uh, really uh, you know uh, the, it's it's a ham fest yeah uh, you know you make uh, disability into some sort of a choreographed uh, yeah. uh, bollywood song you know so i mean it's very it was very disappointing i saw the film and i was very disappointed with yeah. what i uh, saw i mean there was a chance to uh, i mean the disability alzheimers everything they everything was made into this uh, you know uh, 
uh, uh, there, there was no it actually felt like it was mocking disability yeah more than, so yes uh, there is a desperate need to do that and again that is where uh, uh, you know we, uh, we need a participant media model here yeah i think a show like atypical uh, i don't know if it's on netflix or whatever, but i think it, it, the good examples of i think how these issues get treated more sensibly um Let's wait for the next question. Maybe I'll pick one out till that happens. Um, yeah. There's a question on how does data play a role to stir social change through entertainment? One of the factors that brought us to the current social context has been because of the misuse of data. Oh, okay. Great. This is also by Nikhil. I think Anushka is better, uh, you know, equipped to answer this. Um, I'll take a stab at it. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think at, at one level as, as, at Civic Studios, especially a lot of how we use data is that, and this connects to a previous question that someone had asked, is that we try and understand that when we're taking up an issue, what is the current opinion that our target audience might have on that issue? Um, where on the continuum of awareness to action is the audience. And then we work backwards from that to try and find stories that will meet the audience where they are and try and push the narrative a step further. So I think for us, that's one way. I think the second is in measuring impact. Um, and this is a conversation Hansel and I've had before as well on the kind of need to measure impact of entertainment. And we, you know, it's, you can often write a story or a character with the aim of having impact A, but it can completely end up having impact B. Um, one of my favorite examples is Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, the original movie. And the aim there, the writer and the director had was wrote that film because he wanted to show how bad Wall Street had gotten its greed. But he ended up romanticizing the Gordon Gecko character so much that it did the complete opposite. And greed is good became a mantra on Wall Street. So I think those are two ways to move beyond entertainment for entertainment. And if you're trying to create social change, to do that in a responsible way. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's one response to that. And Hansel, anything you'd like to add to that? No, I agree. I mean, I. Uh... You, I believe you are better equipped to answer that. And yes, I do believe that impact, uh, there has to be a mechanism of measuring impact. You know, if we have to talk about films as a uh, medium of social change, uh, then we, we must have a mechanism to measure impact. Uh, you know, it, it will allow us to raise more money. It yeah. will allow more, uh, you know, different sources of funding uh, to come in uh, to make films then. Absolutely, yeah. And I think in the in the social sector, that is like the many ways, the billion dollar question, no pun intended, on how do you effectively measure that impact? Um, so it's, any, as a filmmaker, are there any markers that you would you would think that, okay, you know, if if X, Y, if it ranked well on X, Y, Z, my film would be a success from an impact. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, you know, it's all so uh, it's so completely muddled up. It's very difficult to really say that, you know, is, is an IMDb rating uh, a measure of impact? No, I mean, none of it uh, is very structured. So it's very difficult to say uh, that, you know, something. Uh, I think we need uh, a very proper mechanism to do that. And are we interested? The first question is, are we interested in doing that? Yeah, you know, one article like I was just reading one of the questions here, where somebody said has posted an article from Economic Times about Tariq Amipur having an impact. Uh, but these these are one-offs, you know. It is uh, you have it's anecdotal, so all this information is purely anecdotal. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. In the spirit of time, I'm sorry to yeah. butt in, but this has been an extremely insightful conversation discussion and we got a series of questions. So keenly interactive. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. Thank you, Thank Anushka, you. for the lunch. Thank session. you. Thank you so much for organizing. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Anushka. Bye. 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 Bye.
to the audience we have the next session starting in a couple of minutes and the session is on the role of grassroots media there's going to be dhanya barka and meera devi from kabir lehria so please uh, jump back in we will go back stage and come back in a couple of minutes thank you all yes right